water, in which the first seeds of life were born, still plays an important part in floral reproduction. Like weightless moon-white rocks, these tiny male flowers will float on the surface at the whim of the restless wind. A flowering plant, which has returned to the world from which all plants come, has readapted to a life in water. The extraordinary Valisneria, or ribbon weed, produces entirely separate male and female plants. The female sends up a long coiled stalk. At the end, the tantalizing female flower rests in a shallow dimple in the surface tension. Simultaneously, a flask at the base of the male plant is forced open by oxygen bubbles. It releases tiny male flowers which start to drift up to the surface where the female lies in wait. But it's a hazardous voyage. Pollen is nutritious. Each tender white morsel caviar to the fish world. It is, of course, absolutely essential that some get through. The plant releases more and more, and it releases them at night. Of many thousands, even with luck, perhaps only a hundred or so break the surface. There, they float like mini icebergs until each transforms itself. Petals bend over to form a raft, pushing the pollen, jewel-like crystals, up on a glistening stalk. Exquisite and delicate, they are nevertheless absolutely functional. But even on the surface, they are never safe. There's always a jaws or two down below. The female, covered with minute water repellent hairs, waits. When the little rafts of pollen are within a couple of centimeters of the female, they are irreversibly set on a course to slide down the slippery slope straight into her huge embrace. And the fish, which so eagerly gobbled the flowers before, will now be instrumental in dispersing the seeds. From pinpoint-sized icebergs to the real thing, Greenland in the full flush of a five-week summer. Even then, it's chilly enough to send any pollinator into a frozen stupor. Yet flowers abound despite the cold. Reproduction is imperative, but it's awfully difficult to get things going. And that's exactly the problem.
but not perhaps for one little arctic rose, Dryas. It has evolved a method that matches space age technology. Like a radio telescope, the petals reflect the sun's rays as efficiently as gold foil. The parabolic shape concentrates warmth at the center, exactly on the stamens and stigma. In a cold place, heat and food are powerful attractions. A visiting insect finds it as much as 10 degrees warmer in that private place in the sun. The insects are hot and fit for flying after only a few minutes. And as planned, they go on to the next plant. With such a short summer, the go-betweens must work round the clock. But then there are no nights. The sun never vanishes below the horizon in the Arctic summer. The strangest part of this plant is its rotating stem, which allows it to track the sun 24 hours a day, never more than two degrees off course, beautifully engineered, the world's smallest tracking stations. Floral strategies come in many shapes and sizes, short and sweet on ice.